Good morning, everybody. This is Thursday. <laughs> I honestly am not sure what the actual numeral date of the day is, but it is Thursday. So happy Thursday to all of you. Uh, I have a ton of things to do today, and I decided that I would go ahead and can something so that it could be processing while I was working outside. Um, I can't remember which one of you texted me or left me a comment uh, two or three days ago when I said I wouldn't be here for a few days and said something like, please, 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 can you just can something? I'm learning how to can. Can you just can something? Okay. I don't remember your idea. I would certainly um, call you out and say, yes, today's canning is for you. However, I'm not sure that this is a beginning canning recipe because A, I have never made it before and I'm having to use an ingredient that I've never used before. So win or fail, and this is for all of us, win or fail, we are in this together today. But if you just look at it for entertainment value, you know, woohoo, Deanna, it came out perfect, or oh my God, Deanna, that was definitely the Titanic. We're gonna find out. We're gonna see what happens. I am going to make chicken pot pie filling. Mm. And the recipe to me, there's a part of it that is a little tiny bit ambiguous. So I'm a little bit worried, but uh, we're gonna do it anyway, okay? We're just gonna jump right in and do it. Plus, once I get it done, then I can address some of the other things on my list. Today, um, it looks nice and bright outside. It's a little bit crispy cool, but not too bad. I am going to run outside and clean my chicken coop. And that um, takes some time and some energy, so I want this to be canning while I do that. Then the second that I am done with that job, I need to come in the house and I need to take a shower because that is a filthy job. And I don't want to be touching anything in the kitchen um, between the time I leave the kitchen to go clean the coop and the time that I am out of the shower and sparkly clean. So let's talk about these ingredients and whether or not it is a food bank item or whether or not it is my item. So for the chicken pot pie filling, here's the first ingredient that I have never used before. It is called clear gel. And when I purchased this back around the holidays, I thought I was going to make some apple pie filling and that did not happen. So here it sits. So we're going to use that. This is the thing that I have never used before. I don't even know how to use it. Uh, I don't know. I don't know. The other thing, the next thing is that I'm cutting this recipe in half because it just makes way more than I need as a small family and I don't want a big amount in case I make it and then decide I don't like it, okay? Now, I'm not worried about if I don't like it because I can easily um, turn it into a chicken soup or chicken noodles or chicken and dumplings, so I'm not too worried about it. I think it'll be okay. So I am going to use five chicken breasts and I have two packages and both of these are food bank items. Now, I know that I have gotten some comments that said, girl, you should not be using your food groceries from the food bank to can. And I've addressed that in an episode of if you can't say anything nice, don't say anything at all. And I stand by that. Here's the thing. When I use my food bank groceries and I can something, all I'm really doing is moving it from the category of, you need to use this now, tonight, tomorrow, the night after that to feed your family, or you can do all the work now put it on your shelves and use it on a night where you've got no gas left in the tank. <laughs> so I'm telling you right up front, if this offends you, now is the time to exit. 
All right, now is the time to exit. This is not the video for you. If it doesn't offend you, we're gonna have some fun. All right, we're gonna have some fun. Life is always better if we have fun doing the jobs that we need to do. So, so far, clear gel is mine. Chicken breast is food bank. Celery and carrots, this time around, these are mine, okay? Oh, some of this, a lot of this is mine. Peas and carrots are mine. And I've got a little baggie here of both. Onions. Finally, something is food bank. <laughs> Have some onions, okay? Those are food bank. I'm going to use some chicken broth, and this is mine. Actually, this is not uh, roasted chicken. This is mine. Okay, this was a Costco chicken, and uh, after I ate that glorious Costco chicken for days, I turned it into broth, and so this is mine. All the seasonings are mine, and they're very, very simple. Salt, pepper, and garlic powder. Recipe called for celery seed, but since I am not a big fan of celery seed, I will not be using that. So this is where we are. I might add some time, you guys. Let me think about it. Now, it won't affect the safety or the integrity of the recipe for me to change the spices around. The only um, thing that I might modify is it calls for celery and I like celery if it's cooked, so I don't think I'm gonna have a problem with it, but if it looks like it's too much celery, I am going to, you guys have no idea what's going on right outside my window. Mm -mm. Uh, I'll reduce the celery. So today when I went to go let my chickens out into their own run, I left the door open for a minute so I could pour fresh, sparkly, mountain fresh water for them. And the little monsters took advantage and three of them, Matilde, wait for me and wait a minute, um, escaped. So they are running around in my yard all day today. The other chickens are in their coop, nice and secure. Um, but when I looked out my window, they had jumped on my husband's workbench, which is right outside my kitchen window. <laughs> and when I went like this to look over there, <laughs> they were looking at me through the kitchen window. It's like, hey, you guys aren't even supposed to be out there. All right. So as far as my babies, let's see where everybody is. All right. The three little gumball chickens. Um, Chitty Chitty Bang Bang, Chicky Poo, and Bridget Butterball Fanny Pants. They're all right here right here. So in a second, I'm going to pick them up and put them back into their crate because I cannot have them running around where I'm concentrated on something else. Okay. That's asking for a chicky pancake and nobody wants that. Most of all me, my two black chickens, Sissy and, oh, they're over there. Sissy and Betty Jan. They are right over here by the glass door. They've been outside a couple times this morning but honestly, they feel like it's just a little too nippy for their delicate selves to spend the morning out on the back porch. Grandma sat out here for about an hour and a half, two hours, drank her coffee, ate her breakfast, watched the birds, commented the whole time she had a blast, and then she watched herself on video from last night about Grandma talking to the baby chicks before going to bed, and she just laughed and giggled and had the best time, so she enjoyed that. Okay, let me stop the babbling. All right, let me stop the babbling. Let me go get these birds taken care of. I'll wash my hands. I'll get some stuff started. What I am going to do off screen is I'm going to put these in a stock pot of boiling water per the directions. You guys all know how to do that. You put a pot of water on your stove. You turn it on high. You add a pinch of salt. You plop your chicken breasts in, you come back 20 minutes later. You guys can all do that, all right? So I'm not going to show that, but that's what I'll be doing, and then I'll be coming back to you. All right, I'll be back. Ta-ta. 
Okay, I don't know what you guys have been doing, but I've been working like a little dog for you. <laughs> so I hope that you are enjoying this video so far. Okay, let's talk about what I did off screen. Right here is my canner, and I took four pint jars off my canning shelves. They've been through the dishwasher. I also like to hand wash them and then I fill them with hot water and I stick them in my canner to just stay nice and hot while I do my thing. Okay? I took care of all of this everything. Everything's prepped and ready to go. So in here is salt, pepper, and garlic salt. We have two and a half cups of sliced carrots and I peeled those. Anytime you can, you want to peel your vegetables, okay? That is the USDA standard. Now, I've watched some of you, and I have loved your shows, and some of you grow your own vegetables, and you choose not to um, take your peels off because you know what is in your garden, and I think that's great. That is perfect. That is perfect for your kitchen. In this kitchen, we peel. So I peeled those carrots. Not a big deal, people. Not a big deal. All right, I also have um, two cups worth of peas and corn. Now, the original recipe did not call for corn, but I did not have enough peas, so that's what we've got. I have chopped my onions and my celery. Those are right there. And then I have pulled my chicken breast out of the boiling water, and they're just going to rest here for maybe 10 or 15 minutes, and then I'm going to chop those up. Make sure I have five cups, and then we're going to start the actual process of making the filling. But before I do that, I'm going to sit down, and I am going to read that recipe thoroughly. I'm going to read it through twice like it's a contract, like my life depends on it, right? I'm going to read it through twice, make sure I understand uh, what it is they're asking me to do, and then I'm going to come back to you, and we're going to do it. What else you got to do today, right? You don't have anything more fun than this. <laughs> oh my God, I hope that you do. All right, I'll be back in a few minutes. Okay, I reread those directions. I feel like I figured out the part that was ambiguous to me. Um, they are calling the reserved water and the additional broth, they're calling that the same thing. So I am going to use the reserved liquid only if I need it. I want my chicken broth. So that's heating up on the stove because it needs to be hot. We're going to do a hot pack. So I'm bringing you down here right now. I'm just going to chop the chicken. I think that's going to be like so riveting and exciting that you guys are going to want to see that. Now, if the chicken isn't completely cooked, we are not going to lose our minds. <laughs> This chicken will process in the um, canner for 75 minutes, and I assure you, it will be cooked. Okay? Uh, that was Sissy flying across the living room. Hmm. I don't know, Sissy. Are you going to stay off the counter? All right, let me bring you down here. All right, this is my cutting board, and I just had the chicken on it a second ago, so that's all that's on my cutting board. I want to, oh, it's still a little bit warm. My hands have been recently washed, so we're not too worried. And I kind of want nice cubes, okay? Not great big cubes, but cubes that are just perfect for chicken pot pie. And I'm going to use my measuring cup here. And it just had some carrots in it, so I'm not too worried about it, but I am wiping it out. And we're just going to make sure that we have five cups of chicken. I think we're going to have no problem with that. I think we're probably going to have extra chicken. But like I said, I did not want to make a full recipe uh, the first time out. Plus, I wasn't exactly sure how much chicken I would get. Oh, I'm going to have plenty out of this. Can you guys see me? Okay. 
So I'm just going to do this one for you and then I will do the rest off camera. I don't think you need to watch me do all four. Okay, so we're going to call that one. Oh, I need five. I need five cups. Maybe I won't have any extra. Okay, I need five cups. Can you hear them peeping on the floor? Okay, let me finish these up and then I'll come back to you. Okay, we have exactly five cups. There is four in here and this is the fifth. So that was perfect, no problems there. All right, I am going to get my hot plate set up so we can saute the celery and the onions and then I also need to do that swishy swishy thing with the clear gel and then we're ready to can <laughs> after we add all the other vegetables <laughs> all right i'll come back okay let me bring you back my fan is running in the back i think you can hear that i don't know if i can fix that right this second let's bring you down here here is our butter and to that, we're going to add our celery and our onions. And we're going to saute this until nice and translucent. So I'm going to let that do its thing. I'm going to see if I can fix that fan. I'm not even sure why it turned on. Well, my phantom fan is on. We'll see how long it takes to turn off. Okay, so we're gonna just do this until it's translucent. And then I'm gonna have to bring my big stock pot over because everything else gets mixed into the big stock pot. And that's a little bit of a job. And I don't think you'll be able to see into the pot, but we will try our best. Okay, I fixed the fan issue. It did require a phone call to my honey bunny, <laughs> who was exceedingly patient. And in the end, it boiled down to this. Deanna, darling, go get the step stool. Climb up on the step stool and unplug the microwave. And I did it. I think that makes me an electrician. I really do. All right, he's so sweet. He never makes fun of me when it's as easy as that. All right. Okay, my celery and onions are beautiful. Okay, I would show you, but I don't think there's any way for you to see into the pot. There we go. Okay, so you're just gonna watch me dump from here on out. Otherwise, it's likely that I'm gonna have an accident and my chicken pot pie filling goes all over the floor. And uh, then you're gonna hear language that YouTube does not approve of. And then you might not see me anymore. I don't know. <laughs> All right, we are going to add our two glorious things of carrots and I'll be washing these cups and using them again. Uh, I just don't have enough stuff in my house to be able to have nice little containers for everything. Here's our peas and carrots, looking beautiful. We're gonna give that a good stir. And then we're going to add in our chicken. Speaking of chickens, my back door is open. Betty Jan and Sissy, I think, are outside. Uh, they're starting to go down the back porch stairs. So I think they're getting pretty close to wanting to be real chickens and not my babies. And that's okay. They are chickens. They are barnyard animals. They are not my little boo-boos. I bet my husband wishes he'd let me have a dog now, don't you? Or a cat? Yeah. Because if you have a dog or a cat and they sleep on the edge of your bed, you are not a crazy freak lady. You have two little chickens on a tea towel that sleep on the foot of your bed, you are a freak. 
husband's married to a freak. All right, stay right there. Now, we are going to add our five cups of chicken. And I was thinking, you know, I don't know about you guys. Hold on, let me see if I've got one down here. Yes, I do, if I can get it. A lot of times when you get your boxes or you're going through the protein section, if you get to do your shop yourself, you will see these cans of chicken breast. And I would imagine there's probably a cup in this can or pretty close. There is no reason in the world why you cannot use this if this is what you have. Now, you'd have to have four or five cans and maybe that's too big of investment for your canned chicken. But if you make your own canned chicken, you can use that as well. And had I had a little bit more freezer room, I might have used my canned chicken and not these chicken breasts. But it is what it is, people. It is what it is. Here we go. Chicken is going in. Okay, chicken is in there. Now this is just all going to get nice and warm and while it's getting warm we're going to take our clear gel and our hot liquid and we are going to mix that together and then we're going to add it to this and then it boils for five minutes. <laughs> Not so hard but this is gorgeous. Let me, I can hold this up. Can you guys see in that pot all that color? Isn't it lovely? going to be good. Okay, now I won't be making this pot pie. Um, I'll probably make it next week when my husband's home because he likes pot pie. I like pot pie. Grandma likes pot pie. Uh, so we'll see. Okay, now I need three cups of hot liquid. And I might need more, but this is what we're going to start with. Also, to my chicken broth, Well, I will show it to you, but I don't see it, and I'm not going to hunt for it. To my chicken broth that I canned, I added two tablespoons of Better Than Bouillon because I like a really rich flavor, and I want that in my chicken pot pie. That's the adjustment that I made, and then no celery seed. All right, I keep having to walk away. All right, so three cups of stock are going to go in a bowl right here. And I'm going to mix in my clear gel. Okay? So let's do that. And I don't have very much counter space, so it's a little bit of a, of a circus. There's one. There's two. Here's three. And the recipe said I might need to add a little more liquid so I have some of my nice brothy liquid in this pan if we need it. All right, let's add the clear gel. Bearing in mind that I have never used clear gel before. I wish I could show you, but my pot's here, my hot plate's here, my canner's there. Maybe. Can I get you right there? Oh, maybe. Oh, hang on, people. It's going to be bumpy. No, I cannot. Okay, you're just going to have to trust me, okay? Clear gel is going in. Clear gel just made a mess all over my counter. Most of it made it into the bowl. I'm already trying to talk myself out of cleaning up my chicken coop because I have trashed my kitchen. I have trashed my kitchen. Okay, well actually it blends in really nice. Even nicer than, I don't know what its main ingredient is, but it blends in nicer than cornstarch. I'll put some in, a, in my clear cup and you guys can see what you think. So it looks like that, okay? 
So now we're going to add all of this to my chicken pot pie filling and we're going to let it come to a boil and we're going to boil it for five minutes and then we're ready to can. So while we do that, I'm going to clean off as much of my physical space right here because I don't want to be crowded while I'm canning. So here we go. Woohoo! There's that. And this. And we'll see. We'll see how it goes. Okay. So we first we just have to bring it to a boil and then it's going to boil for five minutes. So I'm going to come back to you guys in five minutes after this is boiled. Okay, I'm glad I came back and checked on this. The recipe did say to keep an eye on it and stir it the whole time so that it doesn't scorch the bottom. And my bottom is not scorched. <laughs> what a great sentence. My bottom is not scorched. Hmm. I wonder if I'll have to use that in the future. My bottom is, oh, here's that little stinking can right here. Blind as a bat. Okay, so it says to bring it to a boil, but there is nothing to boil. It's all solid now. So I think that's what they meant when they said that you might have to add some additional liquid. So we're going to add about a half a cup and see if that's enough that I can get a boiling uh, texture liquid in here. So that's what it's asking for. And we have to do that in order to be safe, okay? That's important. We've got to bring it to a boil for five minutes. So that does not appear to be enough liquid. Let's go ahead and add that. I'm just gonna add it all. Why mess around? Now, I did reserve some of the actual just it's just boiled water it's got no flavor from when I boiled the chickens so if I need more than that I'm gonna add that okay I think we can get a boil from this this looks like it's enough liquid all right I will keep an eye on this you guys you know go do whatever it is you're gonna do you've got about two seconds until I'm back all right so make it fast okay it has been five minutes I did end up having to add about two and a half cups of additional liquid to get the consistency that I think that it should be. I also added a little more um, chicken bouillon flavor and I'm going to taste it now for you guys and I'll tell you what I think and I'm just going to taste the filling not the vegetables. Okay. So it's nice and thick. The filling is nice and thick. Looks like a real nice gravy. Whoa, that's gonna drop. Or that's an onion, I'm not sure. Okay, so it looks like that. You can see the steam coming off. <laughs> so I hope I'm not gonna burn myself. All right, I can see Sissy and Janny outside playing in the, in the sun. They're having their great day. Bumblebees are doing good. Grandma's still napping, kitchen's a fright. <laughs> and I am talking myself out of cleaning that coop and it is working. Here we go. Mm. Mm. Okay, that is good. That is good. Okay, so now we're going to fill our jars. I just pulled this one out of the canner and um, dumped the hot water out of it. So let me bring you down here and we're going to do our usual. We're going to vinegar wipe the outside of each jar after we fill it. We're going to air bubble it and then we're going to seal it up. So let me get you right there. I think you'll be good to see me. And here we go. Got some nice clean lids here. <sighs> but I need a measuring cup. And I've got to wash it, so give me just a second.
minute, guys. I have a brand of dish soap that I do not like. And if I'm not careful, it leaves a residue on my dishes. And worse than that, my husband bought it at Costco, so I have two big containers of it. Okay, here we go. Can you guys see okay? Right here. We are going to add probably just about two cups of filling. And it said, leave a generous headspace, a one inch headspace. So I am going to do just that. I think that's probably what I'm looking for. Might have to spoon some of that out. Yeah, I'm going to take a little bit of that out. Okay, that to me, ouch, that is hot. Grab it up here. That to me looks like a generous headspace of one inch. So let me clean this jar up. A little bit of vinegar. One paper towel. We want this to be super, super clean. This is one of those things, products, that has a tendency when you're canning something thick to not seal the way you want it. So let's make sure we're doing everything we can do to do that. This edge feels really good. I'm going to take a dry one now and do that. And I'm pretty satisfied with that. The only thing I want to do is just tamp it for a minute. And then I want to look at the headspace. Okay, now I've done all of that, but I still need to debubble. Okay? Even on something thick, we need to go and we need to make sure that we've gotten any excess air out. Okay, I'm feeling pretty satisfied with that. I can leave that there. I'm gonna go ahead, check that. It's a good thing I did. Check that. Oh, can you hear my birds? Check that room again. I stick that down. I'm gonna put the lid on. That's gonna be fingertip tight, okay? We're not gonna crank it on there. We want fingertip tight. I'm satisfied with that. And there we go. There is our first jar of chicken pot pie. Now, my jars have water in them that's very hot, so I'm going to pick one up. I'm going to take it to the sink. I'm going to dump it out. And we're going to fill it. This is a wide mouth jar, and I prefer that. But my empty cans were mostly regular. Okay, let's get that in there. Now I can see that that's got an air pocket in it, so let's address that first. All right. Whoops, making a terrific mess. Let's see where we are headspace. Generous one inch. Looks a little, just not, looks like one inch, but not generous. So let's do that. And that I think is better. Okay, paper towel into the vinegar. One little sheet per jar. That's what I do. You do what's best for you. I'm gonna take my finger around, feels good. We're going to make sure there is nothing sticking on that jar. And we are good to go. Here's our lid. Here's our ring. And that, my friends, is jar number two. Or... Oh, 
Not sure. I think it's Amanda. I think Amanda in the comments said that I should call you guys my peeps. And I think that's so cute. So my peeps, we have finished two out of four jars. Let's do the other two. You got nothing better to do than watch me can, at least for right now, right? Okay, we're gonna pull out the third jar. I'm gonna take it over to the sink and I'm gonna dump it. That is too hot to play with. And there it is. I think that's a Blue Jay. And I, this made way more than four pints. So I'm not exactly sure what we're going to do here, but we'll figure it out. Yeah, there's a Blue Jay that wants to fly into my house. A stellar Blue Jay. And I don't particularly like those. Grandma likes them. I do not. Okay. Let's see where we're at here. Whoops. Okay. I'm going to debubble first. Okay. And I think that is perfect as far as a generous one inch head space. Dip it in the vinegar. Feel around the jar with my finger, feels good. Let's get that nice and tidy up here. Nice and tidy. If we're gonna go through all the trouble to can, we wanna give ourselves the best chance possible of having a nice seal. I can feel some little sticky right there, so I'm gonna spend another minute here. inside make sure we really got that okay that feels perfect to me and here's the lid that fits this fingertip tight don't crank it there's the fourth one third one and then we have this one and I definitely have way more filling way more filling okay so probably what I'll do is I will stick this remaining filling in the refrigerator I'll can then I'll pull this back out, heat it up to boiling again for five minutes, and we'll recan the rest of it later this afternoon because I don't want to, um, I don't want to waste it. Number one, and number two, why not? Why not? So I'll go back and see if I misread how much it makes. And remember, I halved this recipe. For what I thought was going to be four pints. All right, that needs just a little bit more. Not too much. Can you guys still see? Yeah. Okay, let's see what that looks like. And I think that looks good to me. So let me debubble. need just a little bit more okay I like that a little bit better all right vinegar clean paper towel I'm gonna go around that rim and there we are that jar is hot okay There's our fourth jar. That felt a little bit like it might have come into contact over there with my funnel. Okay. 
There we go. Okay, I think I'm okay here. All right, fourth one is going in. I do not believe I can fit a fifth jar in here. Can I? Ooh, I can. I can if I can go get one another pint jar. So let me do that, and then I'll come back to you guys. Just need to be satisfied with what I have. And I am. It's just like on days like today, though, I would love to pull out canner number two and get it all done at once. Life doesn't work that way. Oops, you guys can't see. All right. All right, we're going to do bubble. It's a generous headspace. Satisfied. A little bit of vinegar. Check the rim. It's perfect. I'm gonna go around with the vinegar. I'm gonna make sure nothing is sticky. There we go. We're gonna add the lid. I'm gonna get a different rim. That one just did not feel nice. Okay, here we go. I'm glad I did. I didn't check it and it looked like it had a little bit of rust on the inside. Okay, I could feel it though. All right, fingertip tight. And here we go. Perfect. All right, now, some of you have commented that you use the same canner that I use. However, that's fine, <laughs> that's fine. But you still need to make sure that you're canning for where you live. So I can at 10 PSI, okay? I'm 1,000 feet or less um, sea level, so that's what I do. Even though you have the same canner as me, I really want to encourage you to follow your canning directions. If you've got your little booklet, pull it out. Make sure you're doing exactly what you need to do. So here we go. We're going to plug the canner in. We're going to lock the lid. I'm going to put this nozzle to exhaust. And then I'm going to hit pressure cook high. These are pints. So I'm going to do 75 minutes, just like that, and I'm going to hit the start button, okay? Now I am going to clean my kitchen. I am not going to go out and clean my coop until I get to the part of the canning where this goes on airtight and can sit for 75 minutes, okay? Um, that's just the way it is. I can't leave my canner because I have to wait for certain beeps to tell me to do the next step. I'm gonna take care of my chicken filling and I am going to recan that. And it looks like I can probably do, uh, can probably do two pints or a quart. So we'll see. Do I want to can two pints or a quart all by itself in my big fat canner? I do not. But I also don't want to do anything else with this besides can it. So that's what we're going to do. All right. I'll see you guys when I pull this out of the canner. Okay. All right. All right. I am back. And it has been a doozy. <laughs> I did spend an hour cleaning out my chicken coop. And it is nice and clean. I have taken a shower. Uh, I'm pooped, but I got some jobs that I need to finish. <sighs> the first thing I need to do is I need to pull my four jars of chicken pot pie out of my canner. And then I need to heat up my last remaining quart of chicken pot pie filling and put that back in the jar and can it and I decided that since I'm canning for 90 minutes anyway I will go ahead and can some navy beans 
So I sat down and watched TV and I picked through three cups of the beans. And I'm going to add a teaspoon of canning salt to each jar. There's one. There's two. There's three. Now, normally I just cold um, pack these, but because I'm going to have a can of hot uh, chicken pot pie, I'm going to boil some water and I'm going to put boiling water in my um, jars. Okay, so that's what we're going to do. But let's pull out our chicken pot pie and take a look. Okay, uh, we got five. Got it? Okay. That is the first one. There's one. Here's the second one. That is two. There's three. Four. And here's five. Okay. I am going to bring some water to a boil so I can get my beans um, jarred up and in the canner. And then I'm gonna deal with that other jar of pot pie filling and then I will be back to you guys, okay? All right. Okay, we are back. I cooked this chicken filling for five minutes at a boil. I recanned it. It is in a jar. And I'm going to go ahead and put it in the canner. And then I'm going to take care of canning these beans. This also has very hot water in it. And we're just going to go ahead and do the rims. And I need a clean straw. Do you bubble? You can see all those bubbles coming to the surface, right? I don't know if you can or not. I have the camera down here. Let's see if that'll... Sorry, my arm is all over the place. And that is pretty crooked, but there we go. Okay. That's right at one inch headspace. Tight, but not too tight, just fingertip tight. And that one's going in. Next one, we'll deep bubble. You can see all that air bubbles coming out. I don't know if you can see them on camera, but there was a lot. That looks good. Needs a little bit more water to come up to one inch and we're good. Some vinegar water. I'm gonna go around the jars. Here we go. Lid. <laughs> Screw, band, wow, <laughs> I don't know if it's because I'm tired or, or what, but that one does not want to screw on there. There we go, fingertip tight.
Perfect. And one last one. It's hot. Let's get any trapped air out of there. I did add a teaspoon of salt, if I didn't tell you guys that, to each jar. And it's right where it should be. We're going to do this. Okay, fingertip tight. It's tempting to want to do it a little bit tighter, but if you do that, you're going to have some troubles with your seals, potentially. All right. Now my canner is not wasted. I have four quarts in there. The filling cans for 90 minutes, dry beans quart size also 90 minutes. So it worked out perfect. So I'm going to go ahead and take care of this. We're going to lock it. We're going to put that on exhaust. Just like that. Make sure it's plugged in. Yep. Yeah. We're going to go pressure cook high. It's going to set for 90. And we're going to hit start. And that is it. So today we will have made five pints of chicken pot pie filling. We will have made one quart of chicken pot pie filling. And we will have made three quarts of navy beans. So I'm feeling pretty good about that. We also, at once upon a time, cleaned our kitchen. It is not clean right now. <laughs> and we went out and we did a job that was not fun to do. I cleaned out the chicken coop. And honestly, I was, I'm tired today. So cleaning out that coop took a little bit of willpower. But I did it. So, Grandma had a grilled cheese sandwich late this afternoon and a couple of cookies and some juice. I don't know that she'll want to eat anything else tonight. I know that I don't. Um, I'll still have to go put my chickens to bed. I will have to clean up my mess, but we both know, you know it and I know it, that it's very likely that kitchen will wait till tomorrow. I'm pooped. I will have to come and pull these out of the counter, though, and I'm probably going to go to bed early. So you guys have been lovely. I'm going to go ahead and end it here. Um, you've seen what my chicken pot pies coming out of the canner look like. I think you've seen everything you need to see. So go make yourself some chicken pot pie uh, filling and can it and then make a pie and eat it. <laughs> the website where I got that recipe is called The Canning Diva. I will put it in the notes, okay? I'm not going to put the recipe in. I don't really like to do that. If I get their recipe from a website, I like to direct you back to that website. Then you get the recipe for sure, how it's written. And uh, it also gives them the circulation, right? Somebody coming to look at the what they produced. All right, it's their recipe. All right, you guys have a great evening, and I will see you tomorrow. If I go to the food bank, I'll come back and do a little tiny mini haul. All right. Bye-bye.